Hi everyone, welcome back to Science at Home and for today we'll be exploring about the mole concept in particular all about the mass, mole, and the Avogadro's number computations. Now, ideally when we talk about the mole concept we're referring to a specific branch of chemistry namely the stoichiometry. Now when we talk about stoichiometry this refers to the calculation of relative quantities of reactants and products in chemical reactions. But before we proceed, let us first try to explore the idea of the atomic mass. Now, the atomic mass refers to the mass of the atom in atomic mass units or in AMU. Now, we all know that in the periodic table, each element has its specific atomic mass, like in the case of carbon. So, carbon has an atomic mass of 12.011 or around a rough estimate of 12.01. Same goes with other elements such as of hydrogen. So hydrogen has an atomic mass of 1.0079 or around a rough estimate of 1.008. Same goes with oxygen which has an atomic mass of 15.99 or around 16. Now take note that when we are referring to atomic mass, we should use the units AMU. Meanwhile, when we are referring to the molar mass, we should use the unit grams. But how does the values of each atomic mass of each element has been written up in the periodic table? Now, it has something to do in terms of the natural abundance of each isotope for each element. So let's have lithium as an example. Now, there are two known isotopes of lithium, namely lithium-6 and lithium-7. Now, lithium-6 has a natural abundance of 7.5%. Meanwhile, lithium-7 has a natural abundance of 92.5%. Now, in order for us to determine the average atomic mass of this element, we need to consider its natural abundance in nature. So, we need to multiply the atomic mass of each respective isotope to its natural abundance percentage. So, for example, lithium-6 has a natural abundance of 7.42 or around 7.5% and its atomic mass is 6.015. And on the other hand, lithium-7 has a natural abundance of around 92.5% with an atomic mass of 7.016. So we need to multiply the natural abundance percentage and the atomic mass of each isotope and we need to add those together divided by 100% in order to get the average atomic mass. So in this case, the average atomic mass of lithium is equivalent to 6.941 which is the one that is specified in the periodic table. Now let us proceed to the concept of the mole. Now the mole concept is considered as the core of all the stoichiometric computations in chemistry. But what does the term mole mean? So the mole, symbolized by M-O-L or mole, so the mole refers to the amount of a substance that contains as many elementary entities as there are atoms in exactly 12.0 grams of carbon-12. So in this case, we are referring to exactly 12 grams of carbon as our sample. Now in this case, every 12 grams of carbon-12 has an approximate number of 6.02 times 10 to the 23 number of particles. Now, this is equivalent to 1 mole, which is also known as the Avogadro's number. Now, the Avogadro's number is named after Amadeo Avogadro, an Italian scientist. But what does the term Avogadro's number mean? Now, ideally, when we talk about the Avogadro's number, this is a constant. So, when we talk about the term constant, this means that it is always fixed. So ideally, when we talk about the Avogadro's number, this refers to the number of particles present in one mole, which is equivalent to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, when we talk about 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles, it depends on the nature of the chemical substance that we are referring to. When we are talking to elements, so therefore we should use the term atoms. When we are referring to covalent compounds, we should use the term molecules. But when we are referring to ionic compounds, we should use the term ions. So how are the mass, moles, and number of particles related to one another? So it has something to do in terms of chemical computations. So again, we have mass, moles, and number of particles. So all stoichiometric computations with regards to these quantities can be acquired as follows. Now, if we want to convert mass to moles, so we need to divide it through its smaller mass, when we want to convert moles to particles, we need to multiply it through the Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23. Now, on the other hand, when we want to convert from particles to moles, we need to divide it to 6.02 times 10 to the 23. And lastly, if we want to convert from moles to mass, we just need to multiply it through its smaller mass. Now, let us try to have some sample problems. So, let's say for this one. 
how many particles are present in 2 moles of oxygen. So in this case, we need to convert the number of moles to the number of particles. So remember, if we want to convert the number of moles to the number of particles, we just need to multiply it with the Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 particles. So it will go like this. So we have 2 moles of oxygen, and we need to multiply it to 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Take note, we have used the term atom since oxygen is an element divided by 1 mole of oxygen so therefore the moles will be cancelled leaving the atoms as our unit so in this case we have 12.04 times 10 to the 23 atoms of oxygen so another example given 132 grams of carbon dioxide how many moles are present given that the molar mass of carbon dioxide is 44.01 grams per mole now in this case we have the number of grams as our given so we need to convert it from mass to moles now in this case mass is expressed in grams so we need to convert the amount of grams of the given substance to the number of moles by dividing at the molar mass so it will go like this we have 132 grams of carbon dioxide multiplied by 1 mole of carbon dioxide divided by its molar mass which is 44.01 grams per mole. So in this case, we need to divide 132 grams to 44.01 and the grams will be cancelled leaving the moles as our unit. So in this case, we have 3.3 moles of carbon dioxide. So how about in this case? So how many grams are there in 0.762 moles of carbon dioxide? Given the molar mass of carbon dioxide as 44.01 grams per mole. So in this case, we just need to convert the number of moles to its mass in grams. So we just need to multiply the number of moles to its molar mass. So it will go like this. So we have 0.762 moles of carbon dioxide multiplied by 44.01 grams of carbon dioxide for every one mole so the mole will be cancelled out leaving the grams as our unit so we have 33.5 grams of carbon dioxide so how about in this case so how many atoms are there in 0.551 grams of potassium given that the molar mass of potassium is 39.1 grams per mole so in this case we need to convert first the mass in grams into moles before converting the number of moles to the number of particles in atoms so let us first begin with the conversion of mass to moles so again when we want to convert mass to moles, we just need to divide its smaller mass. Okay, so in this case, we have a given of 0 0.551 grams of potassium divided by 39.1 grams per mole. So in this case, the grams will be cancelled out leaving the moles as our unit. So we have a partial answer of 0 0.0152 moles of potassium. From this, we need to convert the number of moles to the number of particles. So we need to multiply it by 6.02 times 10 to the 23, which is the Avogadro's number. So in this case, we have 0 0.0152 moles of potassium multiplied to the Avogadro's number, which is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. Now, take note, we have used again atoms since potassium is an element. So therefore, we have 8.49 times 10 to the 21 atoms of potassium. So that concludes our episode for today. This is Sir Dave saying keep safe and always have fun learning science at home. Goodbye!